How's it going, everyone? As always, God bless you and thank you for being here. I'm Gage and this is Candy Coral Aquatics. So I don't have my uh, tripod with me, so I apologize if the video is a little bit wiggly. And I did just turn the lights on to film this, so that's why the coral's not all big and fluffy like it usually is. The corals are doing really well. The only complaints I have is for some reason I can't figure out why some of my zoas don't want to open up anymore. Um, if you guys have any ideas, please share because I'm not sure. So today's video, I'm going to tell you guys how I've pretty much eliminated uh, my bubble algae issue with zero maintenance on my part. So if you guys remember from some of my previous videos, you'll know that I had a very bad um, bubble algae outbreak. I mean, I had thick patches of this stuff just growing all over, just all over my rocks. It was starting to get on my corals. It was, it was a mess and it was super thick. Well, there's a lot of a lot of research, not necessarily research, I guess is the wrong word, but there's a lot of information um, out there on how to handle this. And really, it's a very simple approach, and I'm going to share it with you, and it's worked really well. Before I share with you how I've pretty much eradicated it, I want to show you where I'm at right now. Um, I don't want you guys to think that everything's perfect, because it's not this rock back here had it the worst okay there's still some pretty big patches on there but you can actually see the rock now before i mean that whole thing was covered over here there's still a you know a few areas um you can still see quite a bit of it over here and over here um but like i said if you were to go back and look at a previous video you would actually be pretty surprised at how big of a difference um from then to now okay it, it's it's way better than it was and it's well on its way to being removed fully so how did i do it so the first thing guys that you kind of just have to embrace and just roll with is you just got to get some emerald crabs it's not something i really wanted to do um i don't really trust crabs in the aquarium but so far they've all been behaving um so i'm just keeping an eye on them but i've got five of them in here and as soon as these guys hit the rock work um, they started going to town and picking at and eating this bubble algae. The next thing is filtration, okay? So what I've noticed is as they're picking the rock work and eating stuff, obviously they don't eat it all. It gets suspended in the water column and then it gets sucked up into your filtration. So on this intake for my canister filter, there's actually quite a bit of it kind of just chilling on there. And then it'll also kind of build up on the tube, which you can see a little bit of the protein skimmer. So I'll shut those off or I'll just kind of rub on them and, and I'll, I'll let the algae get sucked into the canister filter. And then when I do my weekly maintenance on the canister filter and I, you know, uh, clean out my sponges and stuff in there, I just, obviously I'm just rinsing out that bubble algae and flushing it down the drain. Okay. So it's going away. So that's a, another way it's being removed is as they're picking it from the rock work, the filtration's picking it up and then I'm dumping it out at the end of every week. The next thing is your lighting schedule. So I actually cut back on my on time. So I was doing an eight hour uh, lighting photo period. Now I'm doing six. Um, and then my violet, my ultraviolet, my royal blues and my blues, they were running at max, which was well over 100%. I cut those all the way down like for about two weeks, I just ran 50%. Um, and of course you don't wanna run any reds or any greens. Um, and I don't, I don't usually run white light. I think I have like 5% white on here right now. I don't like the look of white light. Um, I think it just completely drowns out the color and everything else. Uh, but anyway, so I cut back on the intensity and then I cut back on the schedule. So now what I'm doing is I'm running six hours, but I've cranked up my light again to 100% on everything. And I'm just going to leave it there and see what happens. Reason I did that was some of my Zoas were actually stretching up when I went down to 50%, uh, telling me that they're not getting enough light. Um, and they're trying to reach, you know, reach the light. So I cranked it back up to 100%. I'll keep an eye on things to make sure everything is still going well. The water is absolutely crystal clear. There is, um, I mean, no algae anywhere other than this bubble algae. I'm not getting a bunch of film algae or anything like that. The water's super, super clear and clean. Um, which is great, obviously. So, and the sand is is back to um, a nice pearly white. The dark spots that are in it, that's just the natural coloration of this sand. It like had purple rocks and stuff in it. But yeah, so five emerald crabs. I cut back on the lighting. I cut back on the intensity. And then, um, you know, I'm just every week, I'm just taking out that those sponges and stuff in that canister filter, rinsing them out in that uh, seawater, you know, from the tank, that salt water when I'm doing my water changes. 
and getting those nice and clean and putting them back. And that's also helping to remove, you know, that uh, bubble algae that gets suspended in the water column as the crabs and stuff are picking it apart and eating it. So I hope this has helped. Um, I was very hesitant about using emerald crabs, but I have to say they have done an amazing job. So it is something I would most definitely recommend. Now to kind of gauge how many you should have, well, that really depends on the severity of your case. And of course, the size of your tank. This is a 60 gallon cube and I had a ton, a ton, a ton of bubble algae in here. Um, so I went with five. And that was just a guesstimate. It wasn't any, you know, mathematical formula that I tried to pump out to de decide how much to have. It was, it was literally just a guess. Um, and I think five is an okay number. I think I'm doing fine with that. Once the bubble algae is completely removed, which will still take some time, I'm obviously going to have to, you know, supplement algae sheets or, or feed more regularly or something to make sure that the crabs don't start going after, you know, my shrimp and stuff like that. So I hope this video has helped. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and we will see you in the next one. Take care. God bless. Goodbye.